Hey guys and welcome to my tutorial on Fourier transform. I already covered Fourier series which enables us to present a periodic signal as a linear combination of exponential functions where CK is the solution to this integral. As was mentioned before, different frequencies can be considered as different colors and CKs are the weights for each color. To use Fourier series, XT must be a periodic signal. But the thing is, many useful signals are not periodic. So to go from time to frequency domain, we need something bigger than Fourier series. This bigger monster is called Fourier transform, which is the topic for this lecture. Fourier transform enables us to represent a non-periodic signal in this form, where x omega can be found using this integral. Please note that the concept of Fourier series and Fourier transform are exactly the same. Similar to Fourier series, I'm going to explain the concept of Fourier transform by analogy with, with the RGB color model. In this model, each color can be presented as a linear combination of three fundamental colors, red, green, and blue, with the appropriate weight. Here, we have the same story. Think of omega as different fundamental colors, and think of x omega as the weighting system for different colors, which can be found using this integral. So here's my simple interpretation of Fourier transform. Fourier transform helps us to decompose a signal into different colors, i.e. different frequencies. In the signal processing books, this integral is usually referred to as Fourier transform as it helps us to go from the time to frequency domain. And this integral is usually called inverse Fourier transform, as it helps us to go from the frequency to time domain. In this tutorial, I will solve some examples using Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. But before diving into examples, let me quickly mention some of the applications of Fourier transform. Right off the top of my head is filtering, which I already covered for periodic signals. The whole idea behind filtering is to allow some frequencies to pass and reject the rest. You can think of filter as a bouncer who checks your ID before you enter a club. The bouncer lets you in if your age is in the right range, otherwise he rejects you. A filter is basically doing the same task. It allows the desired frequencies to pass and rejects the rest. The second application of Fourier transform is in object detection by radars. For instance, for detecting an object in the sky, we use radar to send out a signal with a specific frequency, let's say omega naught, and then we wait for the stuff that bounces back with the same frequency, which means the signal that we send out has been reflected by an object in the sky. Finally, based on the time difference between sending and receiving the signal, we can approximate the location of the object. Another application of Fourier transform is in telecommunication systems, which enables cell phones to send and receive information in a network. This technique is specifically called modulation and demodulation, which I'm going to cover in the upcoming tutorials. Long story short, modulation is used to carry a message over a long distance and the modulation helps us to separate the message from the carrier signal. I will make modulation and demodulation crystal clear for you in the future, so don't worry about it. Fourier transform has also some medical applications. For example, Fourier transform is used in MRI. MRI creates detailed images of the human body and is widely used in medical diagnosis. In fact, the image is created based on the frequency content of the signal emitted from the body. Believe it or not, Fourier transform is also used in quantum mechanics, which deals with the mathematical description of the motion and interaction of subatomic particles, basically very, very small particles. As you can see, the Fourier transform is widely used in many different areas. I will cover some of these applications in the near future. Now let's look at some examples to practice Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. First example, find the Fourier transform for delta t minus 2. xt is the signal in time domain. By using Fourier transform, we want to travel to the frequency domain. 
Here is the integral for Fourier transform. Let's replace xt with the delta function. The function is non-zero only at t equal to 2. Based on the sifting property that I already covered in the elementary signals lecture, we just need to replace t by 2. That's it. So again, we have started from time domain and by using Fourier transform, we traveled to frequency domain. Now let's practice inverse Fourier transform. Example, find inverse Fourier transform for this signal. This signal is in the frequency domain and we want to travel to time domain using inverse Fourier transform. Here is the integral for inverse Fourier transform. Let's replace x omega by this signal. 2 pi is cancelled by 2 pi and here is what we get. This function is non-zero only at omega equal to 5. Again, based on sifting property, we just need to replace omega by 5. Here is the final answer. Done. In this example, we started from the frequency domain and by using inverse Fourier transform, we went to the time domain. Next example, find the Fourier transform for this window. Here is the Fourier transform integral. xt is non-zero from minus 1 to 1, so the integral is non-zero only in this range. In this interval, xt is 1, so we get this. From calculus, we know integral of e to the power of at is this. In this example, minus j omega is a. So here is the solution to the integral. Now let's replace t by the upper and lower bounds. Bring the minus sign in, here is what we get. From my tutorial on complex numbers, we know sine function can be represented in this form. Let's bring j inside the parentheses. Let me write it again. To use this equation, we need 2 at the bottom. So let's multiply bottom and top by 2. It's basically the same thing. 2 can be cancelled by 2. Now, you can write this as sine omega. Here we go. Sine omega divided by omega is a fi famous function in signal processing. And we usually refer to this function as sinc of omega. So, here is the final answer. Done. Last example. Find Fourier transform for this exponential function. Here is the Fourier transform integral. Let's replace xt with this function. ut is the unit step function, which is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 after that. So the integral is non-zero from 0 to infinity, where ut is 1. Let's combine these two exponential functions and write it as one function. Just in case you forget, e to the power of a multiplied by e to the power of b is equal to e to the power of a plus b. So we get this. Let's factor minus sign and also let's factor t to, to use this formula again. This is the value for a. Here is the solution. Let's bring the minus sign to the front and replace t by upper and lower bounds. e to the power of minus infinity is 0. a to the power of 0 is 1. Minus by minus is cancelled and we get this. Done. Okay, that's all I want to say for this lecture. In the next tutorial, I will teach you how to find Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform super fast using tables. It's very easy and fun. Thanks a bunch for giving me your time and watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and see you guys in the next video.